what's up youtube welcome back to give and grow investing eric coming at you today listen we have a new setup today let us know what you think about it um, we're going to be doing a lot more charts today so we're just going to try this and see what y'all think so that being said let me introduce you to my co-host ryan hey what's going on what's going on <laughs> Yeah, really excited to see where where this journey takes us. Uh, kind of going into this little, little different, uh, different type of recording. You know, a little more fluid. So, hope you all enjoyed the ride. But yeah, yeah. So today we're going to talk about value investing, and we talked about the foundation. Talked about how to value a company. Um, we've talked about cryptocurrency, but today we want to get into one of my favorite things, and that's buying companies on sale yes, sir. and a huge opportunity is coming up we think seems like we're going into a recession i mean no one knows for sure but it really appears that way but we're going to talk about it today so when we think about value investing we got to go back in time and we got to look at benjamin graham so this was warren buffett's i guess one of his first major mentors um he taught buffett how to do value investing basically benjamin graham would buy a bunch of companies he didn't care if they were good they were great he just wanted them to be fair but he wanted to buy them at a good price and over time um, companies that ended up being good they would recover and make him a lot of money the companies that didn't do so well they just kind of went under the companies that did well they made so much money that it made a huge profit and he had his own investing firm uh, Buffett ended up working for him he was very successful like I said Columbia professor uh, awesome guy wrote the intelligent investor um, just, a, I guess, kind of a hero when it comes to value investing. Um, so, yeah, basically, Buffett took this concept and he changed it up a little. He wanted to buy, um, instead of fair companies, he just wanted to buy really good companies at a great price. So if you had invested $13 in Berkshire Hathaway when Warren Buffett first took over, that same $13, and I'm not even playing, this is crazy, would be worth $450,000 today. That's how much one stock of Berkshire A costs right now. You can also get Berkshire B for a much reduced price, thank goodness. I think it's in the 300s. Um, but yeah, that just kind of shows you this philosophy that Buffett had and how well it worked over the years. We also have to show some love to Charlie Munger. He was Warren Buffett's main investing partner. Basically, he told him, you know, let's stop investing um, in good companies at a good price. Let's invest in great companies at a fair price. And that's what him and Buffett did for the rest of their careers. They're still living today. And they're still doing fantastic. Um, so to get into this value investing uh, lesson today, we're going to take a look at the S&P 500 from the year 2000 all the way up to today. We're going to take a look at the three main market crashes, and then we're going to also take a look at the current crash that we're going into right now. We're going to talk about our philosophy, excuse me, philosophy and how we plan to invest in that uh, going forward as the market continues to go down. So first, we're going to look at the dot-com bubble. This was during 2000 and 2001. People were buying up all the tech companies, all the new internet companies. All these things were brand new back then. I mean, it was awesome. People thought it was, and it was the future, but these companies, they didn't perform, and people were just kept investing, investing into them. And you looked at their finances, they just weren't doing well. This caused a huge bubble, and eventually it caused the stock market to crash. It was a very slow crash. It lasted two to three years. Um, but after that, we go kind of forward into the future, we get to the housing market crash. I mean, this one was just silly. If you could breathe and you could write, they let you sign a contract um, to basically get a loan for a house during this time. Not a good idea. The background checks were awful. Anybody could get a house during this period. This basically caused not only our market to crash, but it just about caused the whole global economy to crash. I think at its peak, the market went down negative 40% during this time period. Yeah, not a great time. So then we're also going to look at the COVID crash, you know, in 2020. We're all very familiar with this. Um, we're just now kind of getting out of this, you know, crossing our fingers. I pray we're going out of this. Yeah, and that kind of leads us to today's market. You know, we're down negative 18% for the year, and this is kind of from the aftermath of COVID. So I think... Um, if you look at the big things that are going on, it's increased inflation. We have increased interest rates to kind of counter that. And there's a huge supply shortage. So that's kind of where we are today. So we're going to go back to each of these periods and we're going to look at one stock and see how cheap you could have gotten them back then. And what would have happened if you would have not only bought them while everybody else was being fearful, but what would have happened if you held on all the way up today? So back in the dot-com bubble, we're going to look at Amazon. You could have bought Amazon at 
five to six dollars five to six dollars come on what a deal what a deal so what, what's amazon at today ryan at 2146 oh my gosh that is so much money that's obviously amazon is a very unique situation um it's it definitely took the world by storm it changed a lot of things um, e-commerce got huge but we love companies like Amazon. We love leaders like Jeff Bezos. These are the kind of companies that we're looking to own and to put in our portfolio for a very long time. All right, so next we're going to look at the housing market crash. We wanted to pick a random company here because we always pick tech companies, it seems like, but we, you know, we love those. But we're gonna take a look at Nike. So yeah, you could have bought Nike at $13 in 08 and 09. And what's, what's Nike at today, Ryan? $106. $106. It doesn't seem like a lot because these numbers are smaller, but if you would have just bought Nike compared to just owning the index, you would have actually outperformed the S&P 500 during that time period. So you would have outperformed professionals. So, I mean, you can't beat that. Yeah, so lastly, we're going to look at this COVID crash. We're going to look at Apple. So you could have purchased Apple at what, $57 back then? What's it at today, Ryan? 137 137 so your money still would have doubled i mean that's fantastic i will take that every day two years your money doubles let's go um so yeah let's kind of transition we're going to look at this current crash and we're just going to give our investment philosophy and how we plan to kind of navigate through this time period so like i said before the market is currently down negative 18 percent so a buying indicator for us is when the market gets to about negative 25 percent that's our goal so if it does, our plan, our plan is to invest in thirds. So for this account, we're gonna open up the portfolio. We're going to show you every investment we make. We're going to follow it over the next decade. We're, you know, we're literally gonna put our money where our mouth is and we're going to learn and we're going to watch this account grow. It's going to be awesome. So here's what we're going to do. So our goal is to put 10K in this account. Um, if we can't get to 10K, we'll do 8K at least. But let's just say we do have 10K to put in. We're gonna do it in thirds. So if the market goes down negative 25%, we're going to have six to eight stocks, gonna be very concentrated, stocks we believe in, leadership, all the stuff we talked about when it comes to valuing a company. Um, Cause you know, it's scary. Like if you own just one company, like let's say you're in a city, you, you own one company and it goes, something goes bad, it goes out of business, you lose all your money. But imagine if you have six to eight companies, you're gonna feel a lot safer, you're gonna sleep a lot better at night. Um, it's just a more optimal plan. So, like I said, we said 25%, we're going to put in one third. If it goes down 30%, we're going to put in another third. If it goes down to 35%, we'll do another third. Hopefully it won't go to 40. Um, that's how low it went during the housing market crash. Um, who knows? I mean, there could be a black swan event. There could be another pandemic. There could be another war. But you know what? We're not going to live in fear. We're going to go forward. We're going to continue to be intelligent investors. And we're going to love and grow during every second of it. Um, so another thing we wanna look at, let's say we get down negative 30%, but the market starts to creep back up and it goes down to like negative 22%, we'll probably put our final percentage in because that could be an indicator um, that the market is going back up and we're kind of coming out of the recession. I don't think it's gonna happen overnight. I see this going into 2023, possibly the middle of 2023. We'll see. And like I said, you know, we're going to document all of this. We're going to buy these companies. We're going to tell you every single company we buy. We're going to tell you the price that we get them at. And like I said, we're just going to watch them grow. So I want to conclude today's episode and talk about the most important lesson out of all of this. And that is that cash is king. So when you look at Berkshire, you look at Amazon, you look at Apple, they have plenty of cash on their portfolio. You and I are no different, you know, in times of inflation, in times of high interest rates, we have to have cash. So when the economy, when this next cycle begins to go back up, I want to encourage you to save up your cash. You know, really intelligent investors, they invest, they invest at the bottom, they watch their money grow. People who aren't doing intelligent investing, you know, they, they just kind of continue to blow their money. You know, the market's going up, everything's great. But then when these time periods happen, which they always come, they have no money, they're building up debt, and they end up going in the wrong the wrong direction we're not trying to do that at give and grow we're trying to be prudent we're trying to be intelligent and we're just trying to learn every single day i mean ryan you want to add anything to that i just want to emphasize uh what you just brought up you know in the times of the feast that's when you want to save a stockpile and then when mm -hmm. it gets to the famine that's when you want to really just start uh going heavy and in investing 
because you know people like like Warren Buffett and, and Charlie Munger. You know, they're two examples of of people that over a very long period of time they've just they've just done this over and over again and they've made billions. You don't need a lot of money off the start. You know, it doesn't take you to start your life with a ton of money to start investing. So uh, just being disciplined and knowing what you're doing, doing your your due diligence and just being mindful of the companies that you invest in and uh, you'll, you're going to end up with a lot of money one day. Absolutely. When others are fearful, be greedy and cash allows you to do that. Well, guys, we're going to wrap up today. We love y'all. Thank you for all the subscribers. Um, thank you for the comments that we get, the views, the likes. Um, if you like today's episode, hit a like, um, leave a comment, please subscribe, please share us. We want to continue to grow this community. We love you guys. Look, I know it's a scary time. I, I know it's a scary time out there, but God did not give us a spirit of fear. We're going to keep going forward. Let's give and let's grow.